catch the fire. Receive the power. Spread the word. We now invite you to join the Church of Pentecost on a sponsored religious program, the Pentecost Hour. the Lord. May grace and peace from the Father God and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I would like us to sing a Methodist song. Uh, well, of course, we are in UK now and I want us to take one of their song. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. A never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. A charge to keep I have and God to And never dying so to save and fit it for the sky. The first time that again. And charge to keep our path. And God to Percentage to serve the present my calling to fulfill. Oh, it all my passage to do my master's will. Oh, me. Jealous care, I'm me with jealous care. I in thy sight to me, and hold thy servant, Lord, prepare and straight accounts to thee. And hold thy servant, Lord, prepare. When all thy servant Lord prepare and straight account to thee. Help me to watch and pray. Help me to watch and pray. The last one. Help me to watch and pray. And all thyself rely. I sure if I my trust be trip, I shall forever die. May the Lord. God Almighty, have mercy on all of us. Amen. Amen. Being 
being a good steward of God in my generation. And today, I want us to be good stewards of God's children. That is, we must be good stewards of God's children. And I want to specifically touch on the role of parents in training their children. I am a steward of God's children. In other words, God owns the children. And he has given me the responsibility of taking care of a child or children on his behalf. So, what is my role in taking care of the children? Sometimes people say that, God, you have given us the children, I give them back to you. That is okay. We put them back to the care of God. But God has placed the children in our hands to train them. He wants us to train the children. Therefore, it is our responsibility to train the children that God has given to us. Now, if you look at the crime rate in the world, if you look at the way that the whole world is towing, it makes it much more difficult to train our children. And also, it places a very heavy responsibility on parents. When some of us were young, parents had full control over us because there was no mobile telephone. There was no telephone. Um, but the first time that I was accepted to work as a public servant, and um, when I went to the office, and the telephone rang. My manager was not in, so quickly I went to his office and took the telephone and then said that I was going to call the manager for the one who called and then put the telephone back on it <laughs> because I had never used one before. And so when the manager came, he saw that the telephone was on it and he said, oh, Mr. Poku, when you receive calls, put the call down so that when I come, I'll be able to receive it. And I said, thank you, sir. I've never used a telephone before. This is my first time of using a telephone. But now, your children have mobile phones, not just land lie. They have telephones. The internet was not there. The computer was not there. And now they have the internet. Television was not there. And even when it came, very few people had the opportunity of watching television. I was a pastor and had been an area head of the church and had been ordained an apostle. But by the time I was an apostle, I did not still have a television. Until we were sponsored to come and study here in 1987, Quite recently, I listened to a cassette that I made to the children and their response that is sent to me. And they were asking that, Da, when you are coming, try to buy us a television. And then requested for other things. And I said, well, I don't have enough money for all the things that you've requested. But because all of you have mentioned television, then I will reserve whatever I have and buy a television for you. So when I was coming back, I bought uh, a television for them. And that was in 1987 when I went back home. And I was an apostle of the Church of Pentecost at that time. But now your children have access to televisions. Not one. <laughs> Some of them have one in, in, in their bedrooms. And if you say that they should watch, you see, there is something that I don't like. And I think we are only joking. They said this thing is for adults above 18 years. If you are not an adult, don't watch it. If it is not good for children to watch, why should we watch it? This is my point. 
If it is not good, why should we watch it? And I don't understand why we should enjoy others killing others. Maybe they say it's fake. It's, it's, it's fiction. It's acting. But why should we rejoice in people killing others? That we are, it's just a fiction. We are only acting. Why should you take joy? The human nature is very, very wicked and depraved. Very. Oh, you can see it in our actions. We organize people to come and fight. And as one beats the other, you'll be shouting, yes, that's a good blow. Meanwhile, somebody is suffering. Why should he encourage that? May the Lord God Almighty have mercy on us. So the moment we are saying that children should not watch it, it means it's not good. He has a television, she has a television there. You say don't watch it because it's not good for children. The moment you say don't watch it, then that eager comes. I want to find out why my mother, my father does not want me to watch it. Why? Why are they saying that we shouldn't watch it? Then I would like to find out. That is the issue. People are a curious, and that curiosity will lead you to find out the reason. So, if it is not good, don't watch it. Hmm. Adults, we are, we are causing trouble. It is not the children. When people are accusing children, I say, no, we are. Um, because they are following us. You know, they do what we do. When that a young man I called was speaking. You realize that he was saying, Amen, Amen. That is what he had picked from the platform, maybe from an elder or a pastor. So he, he was doing that. Amen, Amen. He picked it. They learn what we do. And uh, follow us in whatever we say. So you realize that with the coming of television, with the coming of internet, with the coming of mobile telephones, now we find it very difficult to control your children. You are not the only one who are controlling your children. It is the actors, the presenters, the so-called famous people, the stars they called on the telly, on many, many other things who are now controlling them. So the little time that you have is when they are with you at home. And when they listen to you, and when they, they see you as a very important person in your life, this is the time that you must train the child the way he or she should go, because when he grows, he will not depart from it. So let that quotation be at the back of your mind. Proverbs 22, 6. Train a child the way he should go. And when he grows, he will not go out of it. Because unless the Lord raises apostles and prophets, pastors and evangelists, and people who are ready to respond to him, God is always ready. He's ready to raise up these people. But will the people respond, men and women, who are endowed with apostolic and prophetic ministries, teaching ministries, evangelistic ministries, who will be able to be the messengers of God for this generation and speak the gospel to the generations. The way and manner the word is going is very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. You remember in Germany here when the National Ethics Council voted that insects could be legal. They were about 25 people. And then out of that 25, 14 people voted yes, and nine people said no, and two people were abstentia. They didn't vote at all. They didn't vote. You see, and what caused that? That was around 2008. Um, they realized that a brother had married his own sister, and they had given birth for four children. Two of them were disabled Two of them were okay. And so eventually, the, the man was jailed and the woman was asked to take care of 
the children. But that man was jailed for three years. So that set people thinking, what can we do? Um, what should we do? Then eventually, they had to come out with the decision that, well, the fundamental rights of adult siblings to sexual self-determination is to be weighed more heavily than the abstract idea of protection of the family. In other words, if mature um, brothers and sisters want to marry, why should pre prevent them? Uh, they can do that if they think that there's nothing wrong with that. So that is what the National Ethics Committee voted upon. And this one will be taken to their uh, parliament or whatever is in charge of the laws for a law to be promulgated. So that is it. Korea also had a law against adultery. And then they realized that um, within six years, about 5,500 people had been arrayed before the court on the issue of idolatry. And then they said, well, the whole thing is becoming too rampant. What can we do? Um, well, then what we can do is that um, even if you condemn idolatry as, um, as immoral, uh, the state power should not come in. We should leave it for the individuals to decide. So that if somebody does that, it should not be taken as a crime, but it should be taken as something that is private. They saw that it was becoming too much, so they wanted to leave it for people. And you know what has happened to homosexuality, where various countries have gone in for um, homosexuality, that um, it is legal and people could do it freely. And in Canada, they want to teach it. They have spoken about it. Now they want to teach it um, at schools uh, because it was legalized some time back. And they realized that it's not moving faster as they thought. So they want it to move very, very fast. And for that reason, they want to bring it to primary school level to teach the children. Now, if you look at all these things that are happening, you realize that the way and manner, the world is moving is quite dangerous. It seems that the postmodern world, the world as we have it now, is trying to take God out of the world, out of their language, so that people can do whatever they want. If people are talking of trying to make Sunday a working day, then they are trying to say that Christianity is no longer important. Why can't we work on Sunday? When the children were performing, they told us about Sabbath, the importance of Sabbath, to taking a day out to rest. And they are saying that no, even Sunday you can go out to work. So when there is a fanfare, when there is a football, when there is something important, they will specifically put it on Sunday in order that that will distract people from going to church. That is how the world is going now. Very, very dangerous. So if parents do not take their responsibility at home serious before the, ch the child grows, the world has taken over. It is a deliberate tactics from the devil. It's a scheme of the evil one who wants to win the world. And therefore, Christians must arise, know our responsibility. And thus, we are with our children right from the home. We must train them with the word of God. And there are two important scriptures that I want us to read. I've already told you about Proverbs 6, 4. Now, how should you train your children? I'm talking about the responsibilities of parents, the role of training your children. What are your responsibilities as you train your children? The first one that I want to touch on is teach your children the word of God. What I've spoken to you just was to let you know the challenge that our children are facing in this contemporary world. 
to the point that if we do not become aware of their challenges, we will not be able to play the role that God has given to us. So I've exposed you to the challenge. And now I want us to see your responsibilities, the roles that you have to play. And one of the important roles is to teach the children the word of God. And from this one, I want us to touch on Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 8. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 8. This passage is a very important passage for the Jews and for the people of God. People who try to serve God from various angles. Read this quotation. Hear, O Israel, Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 6, or even to 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. This is English Standard Version. Very strong passage. Very strong passage. You should teach them diligently. Talk about them in your house as you sit, as you walk, as you lie down, and as you rise. Very, very, very strong. Let this one be at the back of your mind. Then I want us to read Ephesians 6, 4. So it seems 6, 4 is very important for us. Deuteronomy uh, 6, uh, 4 and Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger but bring them up in the discipline instruction of the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Train or teach your children the word of God. That is very important, your first responsibility. And the Lord told the people of Israel that first of all, they should have the word of God on their heart. So as a parent, I need to have the word of God on my heart. I should leave it. If I have it on my heart and if I leave it, then I will be able to teach my children. So if you don't have it, you can teach it. And indeed, you cannot teach what you don't have. You can only give out what you have. And this is what the Lord is telling us. Oh, the fire is